My heart goes out to um, people that struggle uh, with different types of mental illness. As somebody myself, uh, ever since I was a kid, I can remember just feeling anxious and having anxiety, um, being overcome with fears and worries, uh, slipping into depression where I feel hopeless. Uh, it's, I think, made me more of a compassionate person because I feel for people that, that struggle in different ways, but I also know even like as a psychopath, um, that's just a, a part of brokenness that, that you've acknowledged, that you experience. And I feel like I would love to see our culture not demonize people who have these struggles because sometimes people aren't, it's not always just a moral issue. It's like you didn't ask to not feel things. It, it's just there. You, you probably would like to be able to understand that, but but it's just not there. And I, I I'm compassionate toward you for that. And 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 I just like would want to ask you a question because it, you're really brave coming out about that. I mean, there's a stigma when you say psychopath. It's one thing to say I have mental health issues, and and as I'm sharing that I do, but man, it's upping the ante in the vulnerability department to say, man, I'm a psychopath, and. Um, I just appreciate that you're willing to share that. And I think that no one could have better advice than I would know of than you, David, on maybe somebody's raising a psychopath or maybe somebody's struggling with it and they just want hope and they just feel demonized and shut out by the church. Is there hope and how do you cope with it and what would you offer? Yeah, it is, uh, it's sad that there are, are, are people who have to deal with this. There are people who have to deal with their kids uh, exhibiting uh, the characteristics of, of psychopaths. I do get messages from people saying, uh, you know, my son or daughter did this horrible thing, killed a dog or something like that, and shows absolutely no remorse, just doesn't care. Uh, what do I do? And this isn't based on any tremendous research. All I can say is a little bit from personal experience. I think the, the most important first step is getting a psychopath to realize that he or she is defective and not superior. So you grow up as a psychopath and you start seeing other people crying over things and you don't have those reactions and you start viewing them as inferior, right? You're superior to them. You don't, you don't uh, have these weak little emotions that the rest of them have. And so you're superior and you end up a as a narcissist. Well, if you, if you view yourself as superior and everyone else is inferior, very difficult to, to, to say that, that they're the ones who are actually right in some way and you're the one that, that's wrong in some way. But if you can ever uh, get the psychopath to realize, hey, you are not unique here. You are not the center of the universe. This is actually a disorder that affects lots of people. And it's not that you have some ability that other people lack you lack an ability that other people have. It's like you've been born without something. You've been, like you've been born you know, missing an arm or something like that, or missing a part of your brain. You're defective. Uh, you don't have to put it like that, but that's the idea you want to get across. You have a problem. You have a problem. And so you, ha you lack an ability that other people have. And so uh, what are you going to do about it? And so if they're in that position to not, you know, if you can keep them from thinking that they're superior and better than everyone else, then they might want to start thinking, okay, well, well, you know, what can I do about this? One of the things I've done is I, I've had to invent um, sort of replacement emotions over, over the years, right? Like I don't feel guilt, but I understand situations where I should feel guilt. I, I, know what, I know what a situation is like where I sit back and say, I should feel guilt over that. And there's a different kind of, I don't know if I want to call it a feeling or what, there's a sense that, wow, I am messed up for not feeling guilty about doing this horrible thing. And so I, I can just rename that guilt because it's as close as I can get, right? So I can say, yeah, I feel really guilty about this. And what I, what I really mean is I lack the feeling that a normal person lacks. And I acknowledge that I'm really messed up because of that. And that is, that's, not, that's not good. That's really bad that I'm defective in this way. Like um, the person who can't feel physical pain, they can observe like, Hey, I might not feel physical pain, but if I touch the stove, I'm going to cause some problems here. It's kind of that situation. Yeah. So I have to come up with kind of a replacement, uh, re replacement emotions where it's acknowledging that I'm, I'm defective in some way. But uh, once a person has, has gotten to that point, recognizing that, that they are, that they're missing something, well, then they can, they can try to take steps, right? They can try to take, take steps. 
I do need to modify my behavior because I'm not better than other people. I'm actually defective and I need to do what's right even though I'm lacking something that other people have. And so it might be more difficult for me, but I, I, I still have to go out there and do it. And what you would, what you would hope for is that uh, you know, this can actually lead to the gospel because, you know, we're we are fallen sinful creatures and we're fallen in, in various ways. But, um, you know, if we look forward to our, our resurrection, when all of this will be repaired, um, I would think that that's the, the best hope for uh, a psychopath.